Right Lou, I've got an idea for a video. I briefly run it by you in a car, but I think you're a bit... I'm unsure. You're unsure? I'm unsure. Right, it, it is my theory, right? Let's hear me out on the theory. The last two years, I've tried a lot of what are classed as game improvement irons, stronger lofted irons. A lot of you are put out by them, and I kind of get it to a degree, there's people, you know, a seven iron is effectively, you're playing a five iron because yeah, of the strength yeah, yeah. of lofts, and I understand all that. My argument has always been, most people will pick up on spin as being a big issue, in that they generally drop off, and I'm a low spinner, with irons in particular, yeah, my yeah. spin is very, very low. But in all the time I've played golf, I've never had a problem of stopping a golf ball on a green. Yeah. So there's been a contradiction. What GC2 tells me, I generally my seven iron, five and a bit spin. And then what I do out there on the course, like I said, not an issue. So what I want to do is this, right? Your spin around the 6,000 mark with a seven iron. Yeah. So you do it properly. I generally, like I said, my spin is a little bit lower than that. I want to play some seven irons into greens. I'm going to use an M5 for this, which is one of those, maybe not quite game improving, but a stronger lofted iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a few shots in, hopefully with my spinning around that five and a half thousand number, you hit some of your shots. It's going to be dependent on those hitting a few decent shots, like hitting some greens. And let's see how they respond to the greens. I'm interested to see how it works. Right, so this position is, uh, it, well, it's 162 all the way back to the flag. Slight bit of breeze into us, not a great deal. Um, interested to see, seven iron again for Lewis. Right, that's right at the flag. Wind's died as well, there's nothing at the moment. Well, that's pitched and stopped. Give me some numbers, Lou, what's it saying? 155 carry. Yeah. 69 spin. Right. Probably relative to the you know it was a bit spinny. Yeah. Wasn't it? Now that's a solid strike from Lewis there. That is right at the flag. That's gonna carry longer than the first ball. That's almost pin eye I would say. 160 carry? 165. 165 carry. Exactly the same number spin. Yeah. Six uh, yeah. Six nine forty. And without going to the green, them balls, I would think, we'll check out pitch marks shortly and hopefully we pick them up on the camera. That is pretty much pitched and stopped. Yeah, absolutely. And try one more? Yeah. Well, three super strikes from Lou. Slightly, I don't think that was as good as the middle one, but again, right at the flag, pitch backspin a little bit. Yeah, so again, spin 7 3 and carry 155. So, okay, spin's gone up, carry's gone down. Now, what we need is we need the average golfer to hit them because my spin is generally more about 5,000 revs. So, if I can produce a couple of shots and hit that same green, let's see how these get on. I've got the M5, so it's slightly stronger lofted. And in theory, the spin shouldn't be anywhere near the same. That's a, a decent strike. It's 5.8 spin and 153 carry. Now the interesting thing for me is looking at that ball, that's spun back. So 5.8 spin, probably a thousand revs less than you in terms of spin. Different ball flight, different descent. I can't believe that mine have, mine's basically dropped, dropped and stopped. Yeah. And yours is definitely pitched by mine and then I come backwards. It did spin back, didn't it? Yeah. Right out the middle in terms of the strike. And spin for me 5-8. And that's a game improvement-ish iron, I would say, the M5. Five eight spin, spin. One fifty-eight carry. And again, pitched and stopped on the spot, I would say. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and and Good carry. Good carry. Uh, don't forget this is so a stronger lofted M5. From memory, I would say this is a 30 degree. I'll check that out and I'll throw it down on the bottom now as I'm speaking. The whole purpose of this video is to look at clubs like this, which are stronger lofted and often criticized, I think, for being stronger lofted. People call this, they should have a different number on the bottom. The point is we're in two seven irons, two completely different profiles in terms of the player, two different spin numbers. How much difference is it really having though when a ball lands on the green? At this point, 
not a great deal. Let's try a few more. I think if we can get some a little bit downwind and see what impact it has then. In all honesty, between the whatever many balls we hit, what did we hit? Five? Five balls. Five balls, there was virtually no difference whatsoever in their pitch position and where they finished in terms of landing. In fact, two of my balls with the lower spin cool. yeah. moved back. They had to zip him back, but they moved back a foot or so. So it's really interesting for me. A bit surprising to you or not? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely, because the you know the, the flight. I mean, I probably flight it. You know, it was coming a little bit, a little bit more penetrating. Yeah. And uh, we were into the wind, and yours kind of got up there. The distance was not relative to the spin at all, and the spin rate was not relative to what happened. I mean, the difference between your lowest and my highest was you know nearly two thousand. It was mm -hmm. eighteen hundred spin. And the reaction on the green was pretty much pretty much the same. Mm. Hey, come on, what you got now? Tell me. Talk to me. I've got the same club and the same garage as we've had on the last hole. <laughs> Brilliant. So that, that'll sound great on camera. <laughs> what have you got? Just look at me, stupid. Say the same as <laughs> Stan. Get. <laughs> 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 right, so after that uh, great intro from Lewis, informative as ever. Oh, he said I'll just hit the golf shot instead and... Okay, what's it saying number? Six and a half. Yeah. One, one five, nine. Okay. Well, the interesting thing will be, you say that, Lou, that's on the green, it's front left, and I'll be interested in the pitch mark and stop. The front half of this green, we're, so we're a little bit more downwind, it's complete opposite direction to what we played um, the previous hole. The front half of this green, it's got a little bit of downslope, and I think you landed on it. It's pin eye, but left, but what happened is the front half of the green, it's got a downslope, and that's why I want to see how the ball reacts. So, in theory, even with six and a half spin, that should have kicked on a bit. That's a much better strike. Again, that wind, see, is behind us off the right a little bit. It's took the ball there again. Again, just landed on that down slope. Uh, yeah, so six, nine spin. One, okay. Six, one, Harry. Over to me. Let me put a bit of five and a half thousand on it and see what happens. That's all it is. We're not on about your performance, mate. It's the spin, the myth of spin we're trying to solve here. So you've sorted your balls out. I think this is too far for me, Lou. How far are you? It's downwind, mate. It's off the right. I think you need a set of them in the bag. See, so what's the numbers on that? Six, seven, spin. Six, seven? Six, seven. Now I'm questioning something else here that's brought into my into the equation and I still think it's really important. A lot of you will watch my videos for, well, maybe some of you have watched them for a while. You'll all know that on a mat, in the dry ball data situation, I don't obtain anything over 5,000, 5,500 spin. So that kind of also tells me a tale. I've always questioned that number, but we all get fit with it. We all test in the same conditions. That very tight lie on the mat I'm starting to question if it's right, you know. 15 yards further back, maybe maybe more like 12, 10, 12 yards further back, but I'm at five iron, because I want to see a lower spin number, because I want to see what the ball does with something like 5,000 spin. Whether I can hit the green with it's another thing. Hit the green, you're going to hit the flag. Right, like that. That's got just under 4,000 revs of spin. 3896, I'll take a photo of it now. 174 carry, so where it expected to be in terms of the five iron. Possibly the best shot you've ever hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, oh, it's close, isn't it? 174, five iron. <laughs> Debating whether to give it in from here. The, more <laughs> <laughs> the issue is, where did the ball pitch and where did it stop? That's the big thing for me. 
less than 4,000 revs of spin and that's what I really wanted to see on the video something really low what has it done in terms of its pitch mark and where it stopped and how much difference is that going to make to someone like me an average golfer who listen I'm doing somersaults because I've hit the green I'm not bothered if it's stopped within one yard two yards if I'm on that green to me I'll take that 4,000 spin and it ain't going to affect my scoring one single bit right the final ball and perhaps the most interesting out the lot was the five iron 4,000 spin or just below pretty impressive pitch mark there's the flag there's the pitch mark so one two probably three yards of stop let me repeat that in case I got that too I was a long way in terms of recording the sound whether you picked up my big mouth or not I don't know I basically said the last ball for me was the most interesting less than 4,000 spin Pitch mark was very close to the hole and it run on three yards in terms of my strides. Yeah. Where it pitched also was on a slight down slope, which I don't know whether we can pick that up on the camera of the green from there. Thoughts on that? I mean, it's amazing. The flight was lower, the spin was lower. You know, it's land on a different part of the green, if anything. It's slightly downwind. That's the biggest surprise. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Even when I hit you know, the five iron with the ball flight hard, it was a definitely, hopefully you picked it up on camera, more penetrating ball flight. Yeah. I thought this is going to zip through. No. And it there's, didn't, there's, did it? There's no, there's, there's no, you know, and, and they're not, you know, it's not, you, you can't say, oh, the greens are, because we're not zipping them back. You know, we just played a par three there. Wedges. Um, wedges, and they're, they're not coming backwards, so the yeah. greens aren't soft. Um, so it's a big, big, I, I mean, I was expecting that, the fly and the spin to, to go running through the yeah, green. Yeah, I was. Yeah, a couple of yards of roll. And... Well, I'm sort of, I'm pro this idea that low spin doesn't have such an impact, but I still, with that shot, it surprised me more than any other shot that we've hit, that it's done what it did. That and the fact that we've also managed to get my spin numbers in a lot more higher that I'm recording, uh, other than dry ball data off the mats. Right, we've come back into two upload towers and We've watched back, the footage I was interested in, because obviously we can't see it, was the when we placed camera on green and uh, watching how the balls react in terms of um, how they stop was the bit that we wanted to have a look at. And obviously there's one particular shot that I'll pay most attention to on this because it highlights the sort of whole purpose of the video in that one shot. I'll get to that in a second, but I want to talk about, first of all, the variables that will occur on every single shot at sort of my level, maybe not at Lewis's. Um, and also variables that we, we didn't get involved in, which was uh, descent angle, we didn't mention that. Wind direction, well we played two different wind directions yeah. on the day, but that's going to always make a big difference in terms of the spin. And also the slope on the green, depending on where the camber of the green I suppose, depending on your landing position, will always have an impact on where that ball finishes as well. But anyway, the reason I'm not mentioning those is because they are variables, they will change on, every, for me anyway, again, at our level, and that's what I'm trying to really uh, sort of drill home here, is that if you've got a repeatable swing, a repeatable strike pattern like Lewis performed with his, virtually every shot he hit produced the same numbers and the ball did the same thing. This video isn't aimed at Lewis, this video for me is aimed at average golfers, and for somebody like me, who on each shot will not repeat the same swing, will not repeat the same swing pattern, and therefore, my results will differ on each occasion. But I think it highlights the important though where you know my launch angle was similar, my spin rate was similar. Every single shot we you know they it pretty much dropped was the stop, same. didn't it? Yeah. So it was a good sort of you know um Which the highlight we were hitting yeah we were hitting into different greens, we we're hitting different wind directions. So just making sure that when I hit my shots they always come out in a similar window. Yeah. When I hit the green they do the same thing. Yeah. And then watching you know, Me. different yeah. launch conditions yeah. on every shot yeah. and how they reacted. Um, and that, that's the surprise. And I think that for me, it was always to see what, because I didn't know what the reality was. Like I said, by planting a camera on green, by taking GC2 out a, a launch monitor and recording data, I really wanted to see what happens. And on the balls that I hit when I hit 7-9 and I achieved 5-8 spin, that was, like I said, a surprisingly good number for me. Yeah. And it performed the same way as what your ball did, even though there was maybe 1,200, 1,500 yeah, yeah. spin difference. But the fo the shot that I want to focus on really is the five iron that I played, launching at 14, it was a fairly, it was a bit of a bullet. In Penetrating terms of, ball. It, was a, yeah, it yeah. was a great, as you say, one of the best shots I've ever <laughs> hit. Um, and this less, just less than 4,000 spin. Now, we've just watched back the video 
I noticed that I didn't even look where the ball landed. I looked straight at the machine to see what the number was. And I must admit, when I seen 4,000 spin, I was really pleased that that's a number that we'd recorded because I needed to see something low and see what happened on the green. What was your reaction when we just watched it back in terms of what it did? We knew where it had stopped and pitched, but we just watched it back and you'll have seen it as well. I'll play it over the clip again now for you. But what are your thoughts on it? I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, you just got this sort of preconceived idea of, of, of something that launches at, at that low sort yeah. of penetrating flight and that spin rate that there's no way it's holding the green, whether it lands on the front or yeah. lands up by the pin like it did. Um, you'd expect to be chipping from the back. But I think, so, the, the summary really is this, and what's the purpose of the video? Well, the purpose for me has always been that I just wanna make sure that average golfers go in and try and look at clubs with an open mind. And I'm guilty of it as well. I was just talking about it there, you know what I mean? M5, M M6 irons, for example. I think Lewis commented through the video, one of the shots that I hit, you should go out and buy yourself a set because, you know, sometimes we overlook the performance in relation to our ability, um, maybe just overstep the mark a little bit in terms of what we like in terms of a player's iron for me that yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. think, oh, I want to play that iron, but am I really good enough and consistent enough to get the benefit out of them? And as I said, the, the problem I've got is I'm walking into a golf shop and I'm looking at M5, M6 and I'm thinking, I've watched loads of videos and not, they spin not sure low, on them. Yeah, they yeah. spin low, yeah. they're, long, they're, they're, they're strong lofted. I'm never going to hold a green, so I dismiss yeah. them. And that clearly, for me, just isn't the case. And I think we've just got data obsessed in particular. Data's important, don't get me wrong. But I think when you're talking about 1,000, 1,500 revs of spin, yeah. at my level, it, it's got no bearing on the end result and ultimately my ability to score better and in a round of golf. Yeah. Well, I'm not exactly, saying it is with exactly, you. No, well, it's exactly the reason I play P790 irons uh, over blades, uh, traditional blades, um, is because performance is king. Go out and try it, get, you know, find out what works best for you. Uh, and they, you know, with a, you know, they are a bit more forgiving than a blade, um, but they give this similar launch conditions and similar sort of um, spin rates. Um, and that's for you sort of custom fitting. And I'd say that is the most important thing is. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's an open mind. Don't forget, it's all about spin. This whole video is about spin. It's about being obsessed with it. It's about being, I've spent two years of doubting my own ability to hold a green in my mind in a way, because I'm looking at data saying that 5,000 spin with a seven iron is too low to hold a green. Then I'm playing golf and I'm thinking, well, I don't have problem holding a green. And it's, Video, so this video is just for me, really. I've just done a video which has shown that a ball with 4,000 spin, 14 degree launch, penetrating ball flight, into a firm green, downwind, and has held within three yards. If you can relate to that, I think that there will be a lot of people out there but you know, looking there. Uh, yeah, should be in that same boat. That. Absolutely. Well, I hope so anyway. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really enjoyed the test. Um, I know there's a lot of variables, and but I hope you understand that we could go on for days trying to cover each and every one of those. But I think there's enough in there to make you question whether spin is, is really just that little bit overrated at our level. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks to Lewis. Um, enjoyed that, mate, did you? Yeah, yeah, interesting. Interesting, interesting. video. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, comments down below, and uh, we'll both see you soon.